Hey there everybody and welcome back to this next episode of City Skylines. My name is New Leo and as always I have a nice cup of coffee here to get me going for this episode. Now in the last episode we looked at doing uh, like a sort of industrial cargo terminal uh, and we did looked at working with like the base plate of like a um, uh, like a template for the, the train cargo terminal with nothing on it and then we sort of made our own buildings and props and sort of customized it as well. That was a really cool episode. If you missed it definitely check it out because um, I think it's one of my favorite episodes of this series so far but because of that because we've met our industrial demand now that now our, indo our residential demand is going to go up because we need people to to work the jobs and to buy the products that those uh, you know industries are, are pumping out as well. Um, so what we're going to be doing is working on a suburb to the west of our main city on the other side of the main highway that people come to the city. Um, and the first sort of order of business is looking at getting uh, this uh, interchange sorted out. So um, obviously because we've got more connections we need to change it out and we need to sort of modify it to make it sort of um, fulfill uh, getting to different parts of the city now that we're expanding as well. So I sort of add like an extra two connections. You've got one that goes up and to the, the left and then another one that goes to the right. So that, because we're going to basically fill out this whole top, uh, whole west area with suburbs. So we need to ways for people to, um, to gain access to those as they go as well. Uh, and this uh, interchange turned out really well. Um, I've sort of seen a lot of interchanges and I've always wanted to really try and make a really nice one as well. And this definitely got pretty close. I, I say I, I certainly like it and probably one of my best interchanges so far in, in this series and in, in City Skylines in general as well. So it's kind of good to have a play around with that. This part here was really interesting. I sort of needed to get from the top left down to the bottom right and I had a lot of roads everywhere so but because of the height of all of them. I was able to sort of go underneath the ramps and then back over the main highway. Um, so it kind of worked out really well so that I didn't have any sort of sloping uh, angles that were too steep. So like no, no sort of you know roller coaster interchanges or anything like that. And then here there was just one part where I had to use a tunnel because I try to avoid using tunnels as much as I can in interchanges. Um, I don't feel like it's a cheap way out but like I just it never looks quite as good as being able to see all the different uh, off ramps and on ramps for that particular interchange as well. And then here we're sort of getting a roundabout sort of that. I used it's like a water filtration plant to sort of get the circle right because when you start making connections, um, it sort of warps your angles a little bit, so you have to go back and reconnect them as well. So that actually helped a lot to sort of sort that out. And I really wanted to have a um, uh, roundabout there because we're sort of not in the main city as much we're sort of starting to get out into the suburbia and I didn't really want too many traffic lights um, especially coming off the highway to sort of hold up traffic I wanted to flow very freely and sort of try and keep noise down to a minimum so by having a roundabout it does let more cars through but hopefully there's no bunching up and they're all spaced out so it's not going to be as loud for, for people living there and, and sort of walking around as well so that was kind of one reason for doing that roundabout and it does turn out quite nice in the end. Um, I'll definitely so show some cinematics of that finished product. But like I said, we're sort of working more on the uh, residential area. So I'm plopping down a lot of uh, custom, well not custom, but like, you know, ploppable uh, residential uh, buildings. So from like Search Mode and from, from Rico and all that sort of stuff. Um, and basically this suburb is kind of going to center around uh, sort of like a shopping center but mo mainly there's going to be this park that's just what I'm sort of working around at the moment. So you can see I'm placing kind of like the main strip of shops for this particular area and then in the middle there's going to be a nice little park and we're sort of going to make this park have a bit of a hill that kind of protrudes out towards the city and acts as like a bit of a lookout point so we'll have like a nice um, pergola there for people to sort of have a look at the city from from higher up because we are on sort of the foothills of the mountain that's behind the city so i figured it'd be a good spot and good opportunity to sort of make some nice look at areas as well and it was just a spot that was kind of calling out for you know um a nice sort of slightly upscale residential area because people will those sort of um 
suburbs will be, you know, where they have nice views of the city. So, you know, their houses are a bit more expensive and there's probably a lot of people's sort of higher incomes as well. So it's going to be a nicer neighbourhood um, altogether as well. Um, so here we're just sort of slowly starting to detail um, the sort of small row of shops putting... So basically, because I'm working on like a hill and everyone knows that working on hills can be really, really tricky. So I'm trying to use like retaining walls and rocks and, and bushes to kind of hide some of the weird, awkward things that the, the terrain does and, and make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more structured as well. And you definitely see that come into play uh, with, with this house here when I sort of do the, um, the sort of bounding walls of the property. I sort of use a mixture between uh, like walls and retaining walls and, and trees and bushes and sort of rocks and stuff like that. And I even make like a nice little pool which kind of gets cut off by the rocks so it's kind of sort of turned into like a more natural kind of um, like lagoon type pool if that is what, what you would call it. Um, I'm not sure what the actual word is but it's not like a, a, a sort of set rectangle um, you know typical pool as well. So you'll see that we do come back to this I sort of get the groundwork for this done and then I come back uh, a little later on because I want to come back and work on this park here as well. So you can see here I'm making this uh, this hill which sort of protrudes out and we sort of start to shape this park we get the um, the lookout area sorted out um, and the biggest thing I want to do is um, kind of keep this park sort of still like natural and sort of woody so rather than having very neat rows of trees or, or big areas of trees I sort of got little like lines of trees but sort of more in like sort of bunches so sort of mimicking a little bit of the sort of what a, the outskirts of a forest might be it's sort of you have these sort of bunches and sort of strands of trees that will um, be coming you know down from from you know the, the I guess valleys from the mountains and the ridges and stuff like that so I sort of wanted to go for that kind of style with the trees so it's kind of halfway between structured but not structured um, because I've seen those sort of parks a lot and I think it's a it works really well for an uh, inner city park because it's it, it's it's made in such a way that it feels like you're sort of out in the suburbs but you're not driving you know an hour to get there you, you know it could be a five minute drive or if you, or if you live nearby you could simply just walk there as well so that's what I was trying to sort of achieve with this and then I'm sort of getting in these nice sort of these nice um, sweeping paths and stuff like that, and you can see I'm sort of starting to put that that practice into effect here with sort of these, these lined bunches of trees um, as we go as well, uh, and using those those nice rock decals to make a bit of a cliff face for that look at as well. Um, it just makes it look emphasize the whole idea that there's a bit of a drop off as well, rather than just having like this pop, this sort of nice uniform slope. We can sort of add some. Uh, I guess jar not jarring shapes but um, sharper shapes and drop offs to sort of really get the idea across of it being sort of a, a drop off and a lookout and not having an uninterrupted view to the city as well. And so you'll see that I put trees at the base but not really towards the city so that they can go there and they can still see the, the views of the city and, and things like that as well. Um, but so we're just sort of detailing this area up now. We're getting all the uh, the different textures in using a mix of um, the resource painter to get that sort of full on leaf look and then sort of more of the terrain painter to put in the sort of dirt that sort of rolls off from the cliff from like erosion and stuff like that and other small small details and then it's just a matter of putting in some of the smaller bushes uh, rocks and um, tables and chairs and lights and all that sort of stuff Getting this nice little car park sort of out that kind of comes off the main road so there is a dedicated sort of parking spot for it as well. And really this, the end result for this park looks really nice. Um, I'll probably do a little bit more detailing work before I sort of show the final product but most of it's done uh, in the time lapse and it does start to look really nice as well so I'm very happy with, uh, with how this panned out. Uh, and then after this I think we go back to um, the actual residential area and sort of start working on some custom houses um, nothing sort of too huge like no mansions or anything like that but more just sort of like a modern sort of um, you know, a typically typical sort of expensive modern house it's not too big it's sort of like a, a kind of compact modern look if you will as well uh, but here we're starting on 
a set of apartment blocks, which we're actually going to come back to uh, in a live version of this um, this uh, video. Uh, so we're going to be doing in the live version all the sort of gardens and surrounding um, planters and fences, and just kind of neatening up and making it look nicer. Because basically here I'm I'm just getting the basics done, getting the base layout layout sorted out in the time lapse, so I can sort of just think about what I'm doing and coming in later and and doing the detailing and sort of walking you guys through it um, as we go. Because uh, I find when you're sort of doing layouts, it's easier just to sort of not have to talk and just kind of do it. And then you can sort of do the detailing while you're you're commentating because it's sort of not as um, intense to think about. You know, you can sort of just sort of sit there and, and plop away and, and talk about what, you know, things that you want to talk about with this particular build. So we set that up uh, for us to come back to on the, um, the live version. But if you've seen my episodes uh, previous to this, you'll know that I do like doing my my um, apartment blocks and, and really like having a nice focus on uh, like pedestrian areas, like places where people can walk and sort of um, pedestrian friendly plazas and, and, and places for people to sort of go and hang out and stuff like that. Um, that's sort of what I enjoy doing as well as layouts and uh, road layouts and all that sort of stuff as well. So just getting the entrances done, um, I, come, I also come across and sort of repay everything, so um, just to sort of change out the textures for the ground and considering that this is its own uh, apartment complex, you're obviously going to have different textures for um, the walkways there, it's not going to be the same as, as the street uh, path because you know street paths are never really that grandeur, it's, um, it's more when you get into the sort of the private buildings and, and stuff like that that you would have these custom well not custom but different different textured paths than the uh the main road and now here i'm sort of getting some nice boundaries for the park set up using a bit of uniform road to sort of mark out uh like the wall area uh, and using the movie tool to actually copy like a section of a footpath and trees and sort of just copy and paste and it just makes it so much quicker to do as well um, and the fact that you can copy roads and just sort of plop them down without any issues makes it really, really a lot easier to, to work with as well. And there's no connection issues with people sort of walking to the path. They, they recognize that there's a path there uh, and they'll use it um, quite regularly as well, which is really awesome. Uh, and then here we're coming back to the original building that I started on before. Um, this is one of my favorite buildings. Um, there's also another one that I'm that doing the live version, which is also quite nice. And I play around with like elevations and stuff like this. But this is quite interesting to do, a lot of fun. I really enjoy doing it. Um, and I found a really good way for doing this, um, especially with the grass texture and, and the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the, um, the grass that sticks up is if you just paint the whole block in like dirt and then place like custom grass uh, decals, you don't get any of those sprites popping up and sort of coming through textures and you don't get any sort of gaps of, of like that ruined texture. Everything feels much sharper and sort of more deliberate as well, which makes these builds look so much better than if we sort of tried to use the terrain painter just to sort of mark out glass and, and dirt and pavement. Um, and it also means I'm not, I don't have to conform to the, the grid of the textures if that makes sense so when you paint using the the terrain painter you'll notice that it's got a very blotchy sort of square um, that's oriented oriented a certain way and trying to change that angle can be really tough but with painting the whole thing in dirt you can just use custom textures and ro rotate them however you want uh, and they're nice and sharp and there's, there's never any issues so it's really so that you'll see me do that a lot I'll set the the boundaries and then I'll come back and just paint the whole thing in dirt and start adding all my grass and my my pavement textures and stuff like that and it just makes the workflow a lot better as well um, one thing I really like doing in these hills is kind of playing around with the heights of um, the walls like I've noticed in a lot of modern houses like if they're on a hill they'll sort of have step down walls to sort of make rather than just having like one giant tall wall they sort of make it follow the uh, terrain and steps and I think that really looks nice just to add a bit more variety to what essentially would just be a boring, you know, wall or fence and things like that. Now here is what I was talking about with the um, the elevation. So the great thing about um, the asphalt mod is that you can raise them and then you can put 
decals on top and they don't sort of press to the, to the ground as well. So I sort of made this nice kind of like um, like raised uh, patio area or raised sort of um, courtyard, which was really cool to have that sort of that change in elevation with these custom houses as well. And so basically I put some nice trees along the, the fence there and then I start popping um, uh, like chairs and tables and with the um, the, the new the way the, the the latest update for mover works is you can actually raise chairs and tables above the ground so I can sort of float these chairs so that they look like they're sitting on top of the actual paved area because sometimes they will go to the ground they don't stick on top of the um the actual asphalt they don't get affected by that mod but using mover they can lift everything up and sort of arrange it so that it looks like it's actually sitting on the ground and that people can use it as well and on the flip side is with these planters i can also sink the planters into the ground which you couldn't do before which is really cool because sometimes the planters were too high and when you would put a tree in the trunks that were low to the ground like the branches that would come off sorry they would sort of clip through it but now you can lower it so that it just looks like the trunk comes out of the ground and nothing clips through any of the walls which is really cool um i think being able to do that is a massive game changer because um like i'm sure everyone knows the pain of, of sort of sitting there going you know i wish i could sink this object in without changing the elevation of the ground and now we can which is really cool i'm super super happy about that um and just the potential to make some really cool stuff as you can sort of see here is, is really awesome as well um and then that part on the left that you can see there was a nice little a really cool garden bed that i thought worked well so basically i just used some uh, pavements to follow the natural curve of the, the the hill and kind of turn it into its own sort of custom path and sort of put some some gardens there and so it's like a nice side path with a, with a gate getting into the backyard as well which uh which works out really well and then you can see i'm still doing what I, what I was mentioning before is that having a mix of retaining walls and trees and bushes and rocks and and all that sort of thing to, to finish it off um, but that's it for the time lapse. We're going to get into the live version now, uh, doing some more another house build, and then probably finishing off the um, uh, that apartment uh, building that we started earlier on. Hey everybody, and uh, welcome back to our city. Um, as you can see here, we've got a nice little interchange in time lapse, and it's nice little roundabout, which I don't think you sort of you saw the beginning of, but I sort of went back and touched it up into a nice slip line and just made it look a little bit nicer it's probably still a little bit of work to do um so i'll probably do that after we've done some things here um while i am here though i do want to quickly add a small offshoot here because if you'll notice we've kind of got this main entrance here um and we're obviously going to be expanding into this area so i don't really want cars kind of coming through these suburban streets so what i'm going to do is kind of add use this as a route and add a slip line here that comes off into this area so that they can get across quite easily as well uh, and people coming in from the highway will still have to kind of do a loop round but it's not gonna be too much longer for them as well especially if they had to go around here too so let's do that now I'm just going to turn off all these real quick um, I won't put it too close to here because there'll be issues with people trying to merge in uh, so let's go from about here let's turn the snap off um, and we're just going to make it come around from here to about there and it's going to kind of do like a, a sort of nice loop round um, probably about there and then the same one um, the same angle like that and um, actually what I might do is just kind of have this come around to about there and then the main road can kind of go up that way a little bit as well um, cool so that's just one little quick bit of housekeeping I want to do um, give you guys a chance to have a look at this interchange uh, that isn't on a time lapse um, and that's there as well let me just a little bit there we are awesome uh so with that out of the way one of the first things i want to do is actually do another house here so i've got this particular 
um, how so I'm looking at doing. So I'm going to do that, uh, but I'm going to make the uh, birds a little quiet first. So I want to grab some walls to start off with, just to kind of make some of the um, the bounding area. Um, just want to see what walls I want to use. I used the high walls actually, I think will work well. So let's grab, let's do, I'm trying to think this, start from here. Uh, I want to start with actually getting, I'm going to grab a shed from this one if I can. Just that small one there like so and we'll get some trees just to sort of put around there so probably some nice pies uh, nothing too big probably the small ones is going to be good which i think is those ones yeah so let's just put a couple here maybe having like a garden bed that kind of comes out this way um maybe have a bunch here as well there we go, and then uh, let's add some some of these uh, manicured grass decals. Is what I kind of want to do. So we're gonna have it start here. I'm gonna bring out this patio a bit further. Uh, so we need some. Do we have a barbecue? I'm pretty sure there's something like that. I know there is. Because I can see it in the prop here. I just need to find it. Uh, and it's probably going to be in this one here somewhere. There we go. So let's get, let's get a high level. Is that what it's called? High level grill. Um, so let's pop this one down here. Uh, we put a pool. But I might actually use some fences to just kind of fence it off. A bit. Oh, someone walking across the. Uh, oh, someone's. Uh, someone's died while we've made the house. Oh well. Nice. And then actually, what I might do is I might put a um I think a garden bed next to the pool, and then we could probably have like an overhanging tree. Um. Or something like that, or like a planter in the middle with a tree that sort of gives gives the um the pool a bit of shade besides the house so I think that could work well let's grab a tree first and see what that's going to be like and I'm thinking the shady bush tree is the one I'm after yeah I think that'll be quite nice and let's actually just grab one of these fences and just make another um, another entrance so that like, they can sort of come through I guess there was a little fence there as well, so they can gain, gain access to this area. Um, it's quite large. I'm thinking maybe another planner in the middle here. It's just there's a lot, a lot happening. A lot, sorry, a lot of space, but there's nothing really there. So let's get one there, and then we'll get a maybe like a tree like. Like that one. Mm. Actually, I intended to put like a wall here. Um, I kind of want to do that. Just to kind of a really low wall, just to sort of separate it a little bit. It still kind of wanted to have, be reasonably open plan, but um, still have sort of areas. Let's use one of these, and then that way we can adjust the height so it's not too high. Yeah, something like this. And we'll just kind of make this go like here, like a little side path as well. And have this go all the way to here. Then we can probably get there as well. Um, and then we can have our garden here. Let's go some across here. Actually, let's make it kind of wrap around there. Like that. Uh, we'll grab another one of these trees there. 
everything looks quite nicely and then we'll put some smaller bushes and plants just kind of make sure it's got the white ones to kind of just pop a few randomly down like this and then grab a nice bush uh, maybe something like that one of the stuff ones like that just to finish off that garden and that looks actually looks really nice as well um, and then I just need to get rid of this grass here and we can sort of make some more garden beds along the side here as well nice it's actually looking pretty cool at the moment I quite like that alrighty so now uh, what I want to do is do a little bit of work on this um, little apartment complex you can see we've already done some sort of garden work on the time lapse which I quite like um, we'll probably need to add some lighting in there as well, but I kind of want to focus on this sort of side um, Add some more planters and bushes here and maybe a garden bed and Maybe something else along the back of this here um, I'm not 100% sure on these retaining walls, but if we sort of add in some trees um, and Maybe it might look a little bit better. So what I want to do um, is basically make a separator for people between this road and this sort of like pathway. So we're gonna get kind of get some walls and then line it with um, planters, similar to what we've done in this uh, pathway here. So I'm gonna find some walls similar to these ones, but lower. Um... Okay, so that's fixed. Now we can sort of uh, plop this down. So let's put one here and that one there. All right, cool. And then uh, we'll actually use. Yeah, the mover tool for this one because we're just going to copy these plants and place them like so. So let's put one there and one there and one there. And... Perfect. Now we've got the nice line of trees, and I'll probably need to add something. Kind of want to add something in the middle just to break it up a little bit because it looks a little samey um so i'm thinking well, it just makes it a bit more interesting as well uh and then i need uh some seats as well so we just add a few benches yeah so let's add some of these in between so let's put uh let's put one there and we just kind of add these in between all, all of them i think will work well and then the last thing i want there's one or two bins, let's put um, one there and one there is perfect. Nice, right, so that's kind of, I kind of like that, that's working out quite well. Uh, and then we need to make kind of like a little garden bed here. So I'm going to, uh, so let's, actually I want to kind of grab, grab one of these big bushes to put in there and then grab some of these uh, trees. So let's grab one there and then maybe another one there and then we'll put some make it similar to this one here so actually you know what would be easier to do is just if we can just kind of copy this it would be awesome that would save us so much time um, nice and because it's a square garden we can sort of plop that there let's rotate it around and oh that is a uh, a lot easier to manage excellent and then uh, maybe maybe copy this one kind of across to here somehow and that can and whether we keep the wall or put like a plant there or something so maybe maybe to cap it off uh, that's the bush I will use the planters to sort of make like a bit of a corner piece as well now that'll work actually maybe just sort of copy these two bushes here here uh, nice and I think even just adding one last um, like seat just kind of to the end here so you can sort of sit near the um, near the garden bed is uh, pretty good. I think that's going to work well. Let's put one there. 
and maybe sort of center it with the actual path like that nice um and whether i want to put some more like curbs along here um what i definitely will do is put another bench at the end because it because i kind of need something at the end of this particular area and then maybe we can sort of put some trees around it um so let's have a look at some of these trees that we could use maybe even some bushes no they don't look very good actually maybe something like that so let's just kind of like have that there um grab one of these and sort of stick that into into there and then kind of lower this if it lets me there we are And that looks kind of nice as well. Um, and actually, you know what? If we use, I think now, if we use some planters, uh, some curbs, sorry, just to attach that um, planter, I think it's going to be perfect. Nice. That's looking a lot nicer. And then it's just kind of like adding in, we just need to add in some lights as well. So I'm going to use a nice little, little ground lights because they work really well. A billboard uh, so let's add one there one here and then maybe kind of two in the middle like that um, I think a couple on this path would be really cool so like just like that and then kind of maybe one in the garden I think would be kind of cool one there one there and then one I think one there is perfect that's going to do it for this episode um, I really like how everything turned out um, especially the, the interchange uh, and the apartment building um, I did some sort of natural uh, rocks and trees around some of the areas so like where some of the houses are and then on sort of on the backing of the, um, the apartment block but um, what I'll do is I'll leave you with some cinematics of, of the different things I did, some of the off-camera stuff and some of the touching up. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode where we'll probably do a, a car dealership or a couple of car dealerships because I've already started recording that episode. So until next time, see ya.